right, we start with Sunderland and their game against Liverpool. From Roker Park, Roger Thames takes up the commentary. Just under six months ago, Stan Cummins scored the goal against Liverpool that guaranteed Sunderland first division status this season. On Tuesday night in the three-all League Cup draw at Rotherham, Stan scored his first goal since then. But how Sunderland could do with a few more goals from their highly skilled attacker as the Wearsiders try to end a run of seven league games without a goal. Cummins only plays today after passing a fitness test on an ankle injury and he adopts the new free running role up front that paid off against Rotherham. Mick Buckley returns after injury but Gary Rowell is left out as Ali McCoist is reinstated to the forward line. Ali was dropped for disciplinary reasons in midweek, but then responded with four first-half goals for the reserves, though he's still waiting to find the net for the first team. By their high standards, Liverpool are alarmingly out of form, with only one win from their last five league games. But a crushing 6-0 win at Exeter on Wednesday night showed that not all is wrong with the world. Today, the European champions have Ronnie Whelan still deputising for Sammy Lee, and Ian Rush keeps the number nine shirt, even though David Johnson is fit again. The only change from midweek is that Kevin Sheedy drops down to substitute, so Graham Soonis can return to the midfield after injury. Today's referee, Trelford Mills from Barnsley. A really blustery wind here at Roker Park. From left to right as we're going to look at it, and it means that Sunderland have the wind behind them as we wait for Liverpool to kick off. Liverpool in their change strip of all yellow, Sunderland in white shirts, red shorts, and Sunderland, of course, who've gone nearly 11 hours without scoring a league goal. Liverpool have only won three of their 11 league games this season, and that, by their standards, a very, very disappointing start. In fact, it's the first time for eight years that Liverpool have been out of the top six at this stage of the season. This is Kenny Dalgleish for Liverpool, with Graham Soonis supporting him. It's Whelan out wide. Phil Neal, Soonis, the ball forward for McDermott, but Jeff Clark and the Sunderland defence in a terrible mess there. And they were nearly caught exposed in the first few moments. With Jeff Clark a little bit hesitant then in dealing with that loose ball. Liverpool nearly collected an early bonus. Ian Munro. From the coist, he strayed into an offside position. So Liverpool's free kick. For Thompson. Thompson with the kick. Kennedy will challenge for this one and wins it from Clark, but Elliot was covering behind him. Ritchie looking for Cummins, but the ball just a few yards too far ahead of him. Phil Neal now, Dalgleish, McDermott, Sunes, Elliot first time, Thompson up. Dermot robbing him, he's got Rush outside, this is Ian Rush, Siddall's come a long way, he had to hit it early, but he couldn't find the target. And for the second time in the opening three and a half minutes, Sunderland caught at the back, and Rush had to hit it early, but Siddall, to his credit, had come out and narrowed the angle, and it went wide. Richie, straight to Sunis. Beating Munro, Whelan for Neil. <laughs> straight away again. Chisholm wins it back. Munro. Neil. Now it's Sunderland through Pickering. Blocked by McDermott, but Pickering still going. He's still going. Neil finally gets the tackle in as McDermott clears, but good work by Pickering. Jeff Clark. Chisholm and Jeff Clark still there. The chance for Clark here. Oh, straight at Robola. 
a really adventurous run that by Jeff Clark. And a captain's example there to his colleagues up front. Chisholm kept it going, and McClark had continued his run. Judged the bounce accurately, but planted it straight at Grobola. of him, McDermott, Sunes, Rush against Venison, and away by Elliott, who knew that the threat of Kenny Dalgleish was behind him. And that is a corner to Liverpool, the first corner of the game. Kenny Dalgleish will take it. Phil Thompson has gone up there. It's deep for McDermott. And then he claims it got a touch of the defender, and it did. But he never really lined that one up correctly for the blast at goal. Looking for the short corner and collecting it. Lawrenson, the nod back. Lawrenson's still in there. Dalgleish turning. Kenny Dalgleish has this amazing ability to turn when there seems no prospect of it. And there was certainly uh, a crowded penalty area to get through there as that ball was never convincingly cleared. One back by Lawrenson and Dalgleish turns in his own turning circle but can't find the target. Buckley and Venison. Cummins being fouled by Hansen. A little bit of trouble as well. Munro. Gobelar. Gathers that quite comfortably. A poor kick out. And he isn't the weather to be kicking into the wind quickly like that. Now, Buckley for Sunderland. Cummings is through there, the little flick. Richie, he scored, it's disallowed. It's disallowed, the referee was straight in there. Buckley's ball played in, and Cummings, I think, would have been offside as the ball was planted in the back of the net by Richie. So, short lived moment of joy for Tom Richie. Still nil-nil, but that has at least brought a response from the Roker Park crowd. And here come Liverpool. So they were quite pleased to see that one go over. And that was Derbert. Turning neatly. Buckley. Buckley now going forward. Brought down by Hansen. And Hansen being spoken to. That foul on Buckley. A similar foul already on Jeff Clark when he came forward. So Mr. Mills is a little lecture. Here's the angle for the free kick. And the majority of players grouped for the running from a deep position. Buckley forward. And that one will drift harmlessly into touch for a goal kick to Liverpool. Don't know whether that was a case of the wind carrying uh, Mick Buckley's free kick a little bit further than he intended, but he certainly doesn't seem too pleased about it. Oh, cut out now by Cummins, slap 
work by Kennedy, that. It's McCoist now for Sunderland. Pickering. Cummins, he hesitated. Lawrence was in there. But Sunderland posing some danger there. It's Pickering who came through. Cummins picked it up. And as he was just about to size up the shot, Lawrence was in there with the tackle. And again there to save Liverpool. Hanson. Easy meet that for Brogolov. A good quick throw out to Phil Neal. It's the end of the first half where incidents have been few and far between the only opportunity really Tom Ritchie put the ball away but it was disallowed for offside and there were a few protests it must be said but Liverpool have exercised a blanket control in this game without really threatening Sunderland too much themselves but Sunderland must be concerned that in the second half they have to kick into the strong difficult wind but at half time the score sheet blank Sunderland nil Liverpool nil the reporters in the Sunderland press box would have had too many incidents to phone over from the first half. No doubt they'll be hoping for an increase in the action after the interval. Sunderland get the second half underway, attacking the goal to our left. Liverpool with a really remarkable record at Roker Park to defend. They haven't lost at Roker Park for 23 years, 11 visits without being beaten by Sunderland here. Sunes, Sunderland have got it back, Ian Monroe, which is offside, flag stayed down now, Pickering, and a foul by Thompson, who protested his innocence, and he just caught Nick Pickering as he came through there, and the free kick to Sunderland, Thompson judged to a fouled Pickering and the free kick to be taken in a potentially dangerous place. Clark and Elliott both up there for Sunderland. Richie jumping. Elliott's is in there, but so too was Ray Kennedy. So the threat to Brogolar's goal. kick knocked in there by Munro and Elliot nearly got in there for Neil Ray Kennedy looking for Dalgleish but Dermott and Elliot was in the way Cummins rather well, jumped in to join the fray. Dalgleish the sufferer. Noticeable how deep Stan Cummins has been forced to try and get more of the ball. Liverpool's free kick though as the three man wall of Pickering, Buckley, and Chisholm is pushed back. Dermot is there, Sunes is there. Still, there's a problem over the player encroaching. They've taken it quickly, and I'm sure that'll be retaken. And although the crowd protests that they'd opted to waste the advantage, the referee saying that he hadn't indicated that he was prepared to let the free kick be taken. So we go back to square one with the three-man Sunderland wall. Oh, what a goal from Sunes. Superbly finished off. They were still discussing, really, and it was short for Sunes, and he struck that one so cleanly, straight into the top corner. Graham Sunes makes it Sunderland nil, Liverpool one. Really authoritative strike from Graham Sunes. 
his first goal of the season gives Liverpool the lead with 16 minutes gone in the second half. And that surely should alter the whole approach to this game now. It's rushed through the middle, but he's offside. His timing, the timing of his run slightly adrift there. McCoist. Chisholm through the pickering, but Grobelar is out there. Sunes. Buckley deflection, but still it carried on. Buckley again. Nelson brings it down under control. This is Whelan, Munro there. Rush with a chance. It did slightly too long, and by that time. Siddall had come forward to shut out the opening. Dalgleish, a delicate little pass. And by the time he'd got the second touch of it, the opening was lost. In the meantime, Sunderland have brought on big Colin West, the 18-year-old who goes straight into the attack in place of Tom Ritchie. Tony West's third appearance for Sunderland. All of them have been a substitute. And he's got a fairly daunting task ahead of him to try to unsettle the Liverpool defence. Dalgleish. He really is the past master at making the most of the slightest opportunity. It's Whelan who nodded the ball in quite powerfully, and Dalgleish not far off target with that bicycle kick. Jeff Clark, Pickering, had a free header at it, but still couldn't make good use of the ball. And now it's Rush away on the left. Dalgleish just behind him, wants it and gets it. McDermott through the middle. Here's McDermott. Oh, superbly finished off by Terry McDermott. He's been looking for that all through the game, and finally it's come off for Liverpool. Fine break there by Liverpool. Dalgleish was involved, and when the ball came across, McDermott had steamed up on the blind side and took the opportunity with both hands. Firmly planting it past it all. So Liverpool now increase their lead. Sunderland nil, and Liverpool two. And it's Terry McDermott who's given them the two goal lead. It's his tenth goal of the season. Liverpool bench looking fairly relaxed there as well they might. Gloomier faces on the Sunderland bench as Alan Durban, second from the left, tries to spur his players. But they look seem to tell it all. Hansen. Kennedy. Oh, well turned over by Siddle. And there's been real authority in some of Liverpool's finishing today, especially from the midfield players. Um, Kennedy. A fingertip away there from adding his name to the score sheet along with his midfield colleagues 
Sunes and McDermott. Phil Neal turning it into the middle. Another delicate header, header there from Kenny Dalgleish. It really has been subtlety itself at times. No lambasting efforts from Liverpool today, especially Kenny Dalgleish. Munro, McDermott tucking the ball back to Grobelar. Tunes up to Neil. There's the final whistle. Liverpool convincing winners. 2 0. Graham Sunes with a really powerful shot of the 61 minutes gave them the lead. And then Terry McDermott made it 2 0 after 76 minutes with an equally strongly hit effort on goal. But Sunderland have now gone more than 12 hours since they scored a league goal, but really Liverpool far too knowledgeable, far too experienced, and really when it comes to it, far too talented for Sunderland to break down today. The final scoreline then reads Sunderland nil, Liverpool two. Alan, even when things have been going badly recently, your confidence has seemed fairly unshakable, but I sense it's not quite so solid now. Uh, I don't know whether it's my confidence or whether it's a disappointment really of really giving our fans nothing to shout about today at all. Even in the other games we've lost at home, we have had 20 minutes or half an hour where we have, have looked like a, like a, a useful time.